So now we're talking about handwriting. So as I said before, handwriting really could be its own webinar, and it might be. <laughs> but some things to note about handwriting is once it's based on development, we're going to talk a lot about how OTs look at handwriting. We also need to, to note handwriting is a very complex skill. From an OT perspective, it handwriting is kind of the penultimate. It's the ultimate goal that we want a lot of our kids to achieve. And if we're looking here at this pyramid of handwriting, we have to make sure that a lot of these other skills are just so in order for us to build on that foundation, which is handwriting. So we need to make sure fine motor skills are intact. There's visual skills. There's sensory skills. There's, there's looking at handwriting from a really gross perspective. Can we Can we do more simple forms like lines and shapes? And then can we advance to things like lowercase writing and, and, and cursive? And if there's pieces missing there, that's where OT comes in and goes, okay, I think we got to focus on the fine motor skills, the visual motor skills, whatever else that's going on, with the goal being that handwriting is going to be our target. Because there's this is a complex skills, there's a lot of different ways to address this. So I'm going to give a couple examples of how we might approach it in an OT session and ways in which you can target this at home to best support your child because we know handwriting is challenging and I'm hopeful that by the end of today, we're really going to come up with some strategies that are going to be supportive and um, accessible at home. So first, when we're talking about handwriting, it's important to recognize that handwriting is developmental. Just like we talked about all those different grasp patterns, I don't have the same expectations for a kid that's 10 months old or 12 months old as I do that as kid, a kiddo is five and six years old. There's a lot of skills that are developed in that time frame that are going to support these more complex skills like handwriting. So in OT, we are almost always going to start with looking at these what we call pre-writing shapes. We are going to look at the uh, vertical lines, horizontal lines, circular lines. Now we're going to look at a cross. Now we've upgraded to a to a, um, a square. Ooh, diagonal lines. These are all based on developmental principles that come back to our, our development of vision and our fine motor skills together. So if we're looking at pre-writing skills on um, this kind of developmental continuum, it's important to note the similarities and maybe some of the differences for handwriting. As you can see, when we're younger, th these more complex shapes like diagonals are for our four and a half and older kiddos. Um, and this is what we expect for typical ages to develop, but there's a wide range within that too. Maybe at four and a half years, this is emerging, but it's not there yet. So the way in which we teach letters is going to be in line with these developmental principles. So a lot of times, a very common thing that may happen is we start with A. If we're learning letters, if we're learning to write letters, we might start with the letter A. As you can see, A is more complex developmentally because it's got those diagonal lines. So if we're looking at a kiddo that's having a hard time with writing letters, we try and chunk them and, and, and teach them in a way that's going to build off of what they currently do. So if, if these diagonals are tricky, if these crosses are tricky, if the circle is tricky, we're going to start with the letters that are much more straightforward, these vertical and horizontal letters vertical, horizontal. So those are the L's. H, vertical and horizontal. I, vertical and horizontal. So we're going to be, we might be working on targeting letters that are out of the traditional sequence, but are going to build more to more success for children. So it's important for us to know that the, these pre-writing shapes that oftentimes us OTs are really focused on has its, it lends itself to understanding why handwriting can be so tricky. And, why, and ways in which we can break down handwriting to much more manageable and more successful sequences. So again, on this, uh, exactly what we were just talking about, where we're looking at chunking letters. So there's a really wonderful program that OTs utilize a lot because it was developed by an OT. So it's kind of honed in on this idea of um, using developmental principles to support handwriting. And it's called Handwriting Without Tears. And the idea is, as we can probably all relate to, handwriting can feel very stressful and maybe even shed some tears. And so the goal 
with handwriting without tears is to break handwriting down in, in much more digestible and manageable ways so that we can support success that will then build to more success. So in Handwriting Without Tears, they have something really wonderful called Frog Jump Capitals. So you can see if we're learning capital letters, for instance, we're not starting with A, B, C, D, E. This particular program utilizes things like Frog Jump Capitals, capitals where we're going to be using things we're going to be doing things like we're going to form an f so when we write an f we make a big line down and then we frog jump with our pencil up to the top and then we make the lines for f and then an e big line down frog jump with our pencil back to the top to form the e d big line down frog jump back up to the top to form the, the d these are ways where we can we can teach kids specific motor sequences that are going to help support them in learning the letters. Because when we're talking about handwriting in OT, we're really looking at formation. And we want to make sure that our letters are, are consistent. And as we know, a lot of our kiddos may be having a hard time writing because they don't form letters consistently. So this comes up with some strategies to support that. In the same way that they do capital letters, the, um, Handwriting Without Tears also has a really lovely way to break down lowercase letters. For instance, a magic C. So if we're going to make the letter D, the letter D is a magic C letter. What a magic C is, is you start by making the C. Then we go up like a helicopter, up higher, back down and bump the line. S um, D and B are the most frequently reversed lowercase letters. So what the magic C letters do is they teach you that if D is a magic C lever letter and you start with forming the C, you'll never make it a B because a B would not be a magic C letter because it doesn't start with the letter C. So that's one great strategy that we might utilize to help support our learning and understanding of these letters. When we're looking at handwriting from a developmental perspective, we try and teach capital letters first. Capital letters are much more uniform. They require um, much less awareness of how to write things on lines. And they are much more straightforward. We know that sometimes this isn't always the case. And this is not at all to say that what, if, you're, if you're learning lowercase letters in conjunction with capitals, that that's a bad thing. But if your child is having difficulties with lowercase letters, it could be because we didn't master capitals just yet. So this is one way to target that. So let's learn our capitals first, get that, that foundation. When we're talking about forming letters, we can still learn what the letters look like, but forming letters, let's try, let's try capital first and then graduate to lowercase. Um, so this can be tricky because we also know that reading doesn't follow the same principles. And that's why it's really important to check in with your OT or to, to get OT guidance in this so we can support you with what's going to make the most functional sense for you at home as well. So speaking of handwriting practice at home, there's so many ways to make handwriting fun. And ultimately, we know all of our goals for our kiddos is to write on a line with their pencil. But what we want to do is we recognize that there's so many skills, as we said, that are that are involved with writing. We need to know what the letters look like. We need to be able to copy what the letters look like. We need to have spelling in the back of our mind for some of our older kiddos. We need to know what how lines on a paper work. Um, we need to uh, be able to hear what we're uh, hear what's being said and then be able to carry that out with our with our written communication. So it's really important that when we're looking at handwriting, especially these foundational skills, let's focus on letter formation. If we can focus on letter formation, then we've got a much more solid foundation to come up with more complex skills. So letter formation looks a lot of different ways to a lot of different kiddos. So we might do for some of our younger kiddos, create um, some of these um, with the these dots uh, markers, have children learn how to form letters, but they're going to do it with a dot marker. So they don't have to grab a pencil or a crayon because maybe that's super reversive at this point in time because it's just so hard for them. Let's give them a dot marker. And then we're going to start by learning. This is where the R starts. We start at the top and then we go dot, 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 dot down, <gasps> frog jump back up, dot, dot, dot to the middle and dot, 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 out. So that might be one way we might target that. For some of our younger kiddos, we might use things like a pegboard. So we're looking on letter formation, but we're going to 
use a pegboard. This particular um, activity also suggests, which I think is brilliant, um, using one of those, um, those, I think it's, I can't remember how many, di I guess 26 <laughs> uh, sided dies where they have different letters on them. Roll the dice, form the letter. It takes some of the pressure off when we start presenting some of these fine motor and handwriting activities in novel and unique ways where we ultimately want the goal to be handwriting success in more traditional formats, but sometimes we can't start there. And in this case, we might look at other avenues to practice these things. I really like using Play-Doh and other tactile kind of manipulatives to work on letter formation. We have to roll the Play-Doh out into snakes and then form the Play-Doh. We can do it with, as we did here, another way to use that tactile input is um, this particular person used uh, colored sand and then they're dragging the pencil through the colored sand to make an H. Um, this kiddo right here is doing something similar to this dot, but it's for older kiddos. Now, instead of using dots, they're using a Q-tip, practicing fine motor skills, grasp on the writing utensil, but it's a different writing utensil. It's not a pencil. And then they get to dot, dot, dot their way through. So focusing on where the letter starts and how to form, form them. Once we get a, a consistent... Um, once we get a consistent pattern established, handwriting's a breeze. It's coming up with this, and sometimes kids don't have this fully established when it's time to graduate to things like writing sentences and paragraphs. Another way to practice um, handwriting at home is come up with a letter of the day. Um, I like to uh, come up with a letter of the day where we're going to be learning. Okay, I don't even know what some of the letters look like. So when we're at the grocery store, we're going to today, everything with the letter P at the grocery store, see how many you can find. You know, there's prego, which is, uh, you know, pasta sauce, ooh, P, pasta. Um, other letters, ooh, this is a capital letter P. This is a lowercase P. This is a P that's kind of in a funky font. You know, sometimes there's interesting logos that might have a cursive or a script font. Teaching kids that letters exist in different ways they're presented is also really helpful when it comes to things like visual processing and perceptual skills. Um, so that's a really fun way to incorporate letter of the day. We're going to practice it at home, but then we're also going to locate it out in their community. We're going to maybe come up with different words that start with that letter or have that letter in them. When we were watching our favorite show, did you see? That is a pine cone. A oh, pine cone starts with a P. What does a P look like? Let's write it. Um, I really love to incorporate gross motor skills, those big motor movements when practicing handwriting also. If we can get our bodies engaged in it, the input that our body is craving from the environment, and then also practice these skills. So for instance, this, this kiddo is working on making a letter A. So they've got to they've got to maybe walk in a line to form the letter or jump to each space. We're making an A. Then we're going to write the A big and small. Different ways to present it. This kiddo is writing their name with stickers. Name's already written. Let's write it with stickers. We're going to use pasta to write name, our name, you know, whatever we can use at home that's going to support formation and with a fun spin. Ultimately, we know that we want your child to be writing in a more traditional way, but sometimes it's, they're just not there yet. So these are ways to embed these, these principles of what we're learning, but in a variety of different ways by, a ta by, by addressing handwriting and a multi-sensory approach, that's going to support their growth even more because you're embedding these patterns into what they're doing and you're solidifying what they're learning across a, a variety of different medium, which I think is truly helpful, especially for kiddos that are avoidant and, but you know, we need a lot of support with. Um, a lot of times for our older kiddos, we have to work on spacing. Spacing between letters and words. Sometimes spacing between letters is too big, or sometimes spacing be between words is too small, and it's really hard to delineate. So I might use a gross motor strategy as every time we're gonna we're gonna write a space, we're gonna jump. That will uh, uh, allow the child to one move because maybe handwriting's tri tricky, but then it really punctuates the idea that a space is a bigger space. So let's jump. That's a big space. Okay, so make sure your spacing is bigger. Oh, let's do a teeny tiny space for the spaces in our words. Inside the words, they should be much smaller. Let's do a little baby jump. Coming up with that physicality could support your child in what's otherwise pretty challenging for them. We also adapt a lot in our um, 
in what it is that we do. So if we so we want to target the foundational skills, handwriting, letter formation, letter start, um, learning what our letters are. But we also can we also can come up with really unique ways to adapt for our child. Um, there's all sorts of adaptive paper. A really great resource is printablepaper.net. Um, in their penmanship section is a really great free resources, printable paper for your child. Um, it has a lot of different styles. It could be this type of paper, which is kind of that grid paper where you're focusing on spacing, like we were just talking about, between letters and um and words. So what I like to talk to kids about is um, each letter gets its own room. Don't forget spaces get their own room too. So if we're going to write a, a word that has, or excuse me, a sentence, make sure a space and a letter, they all get their own room. Adapting their paper like this can allow them to see this more clearly, will allow them to be more successful, and then we can work on ways to phase these things out. Another adaptation I really love when we're looking at um, uh, practicing especially our lowercase letters is um, our highlighting paper, our highlighted paper, where um, all of our big letters live in the white part so that maybe our, our capital letters are going to start at the top. But our little lowercase letters, they live in the highlighted part. They live in the yellow. Um, and so starting to delineate really clearly where the yellow is or where the, where the lowercase letters should go and help them organize their page a little bit more successfully. And then this paper also gives much bigger definition between the lines so there's not confusion. Some of our kiddos have a hard time with seeing these things. Again, we could talk about handwriting so many different ways, um, but uh, sometimes seeing it on the page feels overwhelming or it's really hard for them to discern what they're supposed to be doing. So adapting your paper like this can be really successful. Um, We'll use gray box paper. This is um, something Handwriting Without Tears does when we're practicing our letters or our words, giving them something that's really clearly with how big or small their letters should be. For some of our kiddos, we might need to use something like dictation and word. They have all these really beautiful ideas, but they can't get them out. And they want to tell you these stories, but writing it is exhausting. Let's try dictation. Word actually has this as part of their um, their program. So if you guys use Microsoft Word, um, dictation is an option for some of our kiddos that will write the words, and then you can practice things like proofreading. This isn't a this isn't in in lieu of handwriting, but this is to support your child who has a lot of ideas or has a lot of really creative inspiration and wants to say the words, but just can't write them yet. Or typing is challenging, which is a whole other ball game. Um, some of our kiddos, um, maybe we're going to do things like stamps. There's lots of um, really great ways that we can work on the fundamentals of handwriting, spelling, um, where to place letters on a line but using the stamps to support these skills and eliminating some of the challenges maybe of the fine motor elements of holding the pencil or using a pencil grip that might just not be working. Um, so there's lots of ways that we can adapt things to allow your child to be more successful. That was a whirlwind. <laughs> and I really appreciate your time this evening. And, um, you know, I look forward to hearing from you if we haven't already. And certainly feel free to find us at Maybe Family, both on Instagram and Facebook. And you can, of course, find us at maybefamily.com. I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you so much um, for all that you do. And we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Take care.